a powerful earthquake off the coast of Russia that triggered tsunami warnings across the Pacific with alerts issued as far as Japan, Hawaii, and even California's northern coast. Small surges and fast-moving currents reached Crescent City and the Bay Area, prompting evacuations at some harbors and surf advisories along the shoreline. It was a wake-up call. Even earthquakes thousands of miles away can trigger dangerous conditions here at home. California tsunami risk may be low frequency, but it's high impact when it does strike. To help us break down what happened and how communities can prepare, we're joined now by Christina von Hildebrand Andrade, Deputy Director of the International Tsunami Information Center. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Krista. Thank you very much. So, Krista, tsunami advisory is still in place here for our region. How much longer do you anticipate that it will remain in place for our region here in the Bay Area? It will remain in place as long as we're getting um, tide gauge records that are indicating that there still could be those hazardous waves and strong currents. So, you know, it could, you know, until that happens, it could be a few more hours or, or sooner. It, it, is, is this something that can last hours or days at this point based on, you know, your understanding and studying of what happened uh, yesterday? Yeah, seeing, seeing the wave heights that have been recorded and sort of how the event is unfolding, I don't think more than a few more hours right. um, and, that you'll be under an advisory. And what would you be advising people in our area to be doing right now during the advisory? Well, an advisory means be off the beach and out of your boat. I mean, you just, there's no, you don't have to expect, there's no flooding, you don't have to evacuate, but you don't want to be in the water because it can be very, very strong currents that can rip, you know, rip out boats or, you know, and people can drown. So you just want to be out of the water. I, I want to jump right to this question since you brought that up. We had a tsunami warning in our area back in December. Our, our chopper Sky Fox was over the beach. People were gathering there looking for a wave. Uh, but those waves aren't like the movies, right? Uh, can you describe what they look like and how you warn people when these incidents do happen? Now, these waves are extremely dangerous, especially because unlike uh, a wave from wind wave, you know, surfing wave, which comes and goes within seconds, these waves keep on advancing for minutes. So if you get like a five foot wave, you know, hitting the coast, of, you know, right there, you know, in San Francisco area, that wave is just going to keep on pushing inland. So it's not, so that's why it causes widespread inundation. So smaller wave heights can cause a lot of, a lot of inundation. So that's why we have to be very careful. That's yeah, yeah, very I, unlike what we experience on a daily basis. Yeah, you know, it's, I, I, I can't, you know, get the information out there strongly enough because we keep seeing people gather on the ocean looking for these waves when the tsunamis strike and it, it's just important that you stay away from there now i wanted to get to this Chris, uh, krista the earthquake struck 3800 miles away from our region so in the future how should people of our region respond to tsunami warnings located such a far distance away i mean you're thinking okay this is off the coast of russia uh you know is there always a potential that those waves can make it here to our coast yeah definitely um Tsunamis are very counterintuitive. So you think, oh, well, if I'm further away, I'm going to have least impact. Or if my the countries or communities that are closer didn't have impact, well, then I'm not going to have impact. That is totally incorrect because the tsunami will focus its energy and will be guided but depending on the fault rupture, but also depending on the bathymetry. So that's why, you know, areas very far distant, like like Santa, um, Santa Cruz or, mm -hmm. or even Crescent City. Crescent City is always hard hit just because of the bathymetry. So the most important thing is right now, before a tsunami strikes, is to talk to your local emergency manager. Yeah. They will have the tsunami hazard maps that are based on all the different types of scenarios. So you can become familiar with the areas that could be flooded and those areas that are safe. You want to do that now. It's very hard to find that information, even when you have eight or nine hours. You want to have that information um, now. Um, so when, when they tell you there's a tsunami warning, you know exactly the areas can be that need to be evacuated and the areas that don't need to be evacuated. I know in December, there was a lot of confusion. Mm -hmm. People that were way outside the tsunami yep. hazard zone, they thought they were also at threat just, you know, from, from having, you know, heard the messages and not understanding really the, the threat in the Bay Area. Remember that, that day very well. Can you explain uh, quickly here uh, how fast tsunamis move across the ocean? How long could one take to get uh, from that region where the one struck in Russia to our area? They travel as fast as a jet plane, so we're talking about hundreds of miles per hour. So, so that is why you know they're they're here, you know, within you know 10, 12 hours, you know, depending where the earthquake is located. So they're traveling 800 miles per hour. They're just going, you know, just going across the ocean. And in the ocean, they're very small. And the only reason that we're able to detect them is because we have these ocean bottom pressure sensors across the across the Pacific Ocean. And so then, as they go over them, you're able to detect them. And sometimes they're just, you know. 
50 centimeters, totally, you couldn't see them, but on our instruments, we can see them, and then we can include that information, the forecast, and know what areas might be impacted. Yeah, the, the good reminder there that you just mentioned a moment ago, get with your city and find out what areas will be affected first and the most, that information, that data is out there for you uh, to keep uh, with you so you know uh, what the kind of situation that you're in when these alerts and these advisories do happen. Christina von Hildebrandt Andrade, manager of the Tsunami Alert and Threat Information Center, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Mm -hmm.